Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out the UK into your homes. Welcome to my channel, Black Bright News. And what do I do? I talk about all different kinds of news and I'm going to do a roundup um, for today. And it's just going to share a few little bits. It's not going to be very long, but I hope it's just going to be informative. So we're going to start off with the banks and other businesses. Um, bank pubs, banks and other businesses, pubs and other non-essential businesses were asked to close, as you know, on the 23rd of March because of the coronavirus. Now, of course, they cannot, um, they're unable to get any kind of turnover or income in order to pay their rents. Um, we've got some um, pub owners that are saying they own 4,000. So even if the, at the end of three months, they've been given loans and they've been given extensions, at the end of four months, they're still going to have to find that money plus that month that they go back to work and they don't think that they're going to be able to make enough sales to, you know, to, to make up that money to pay back. So um, what they're saying is it's fine to lock down while the virus is virulent, but the problem for pub owners, business owners and even individuals is that they are accumulating debt. And I was listening to this guy. He was he was bursting a blood vessel, but he gave a lot of he made a lot of sense. I mean, he was one profanity after the other. So I can't let you listen to him. But amidst all that profanity, you see, sometimes I think, you know, if I was too much of a prude, I would cut off a lot of stuff. But when you cut off stuff just because of profanities, you can end up losing out because sometimes with all in all of that you can still learn something anyway what he was saying is that the government should have stopped all mortgage payments because that is the biggest stress um, he also said what they should have done is put it on the back end of the mortgage or any loan and to me I thought what a brilliant idea why didn't the government do that that way, the, the um, credit card companies, they're not losing out. The car, 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 sorry, the car companies are not losing out on their payments and neither are the mortgage um, people. So instead of saying you've got 10 months, 10 years and six months left on your mortgage, you'd have add on that three months and have 10 years and nine months. Similarly with a credit card, if it's due, if you've got, like a year to pay it, you have a year and three months. Everybody's getting their money. No one's under stress. I thought it was a brilliant idea. And I don't know why they wouldn't adopt that. But like I said, it always takes the people on the ground to come up with ideas to people at the top. And the people at the top aren't even listening. So people stay home. This is what he was saying. People stay home because they were instructed to they cannot pay their mortgage for three months but in the fourth month they not only have to pay the month that is due but also the accumulated three months as well when they return to work how are they meant to pay that amount because they have no income and the rescue money is not enough the stimulus checks um, to pay it's enough to pay bills but not not enough to pay mortgage and rent as well if they really cared, they would suggest that the three months they furloughed to be put on the back end of the loan so that no one loses out. So instead, they're stuck with credit card payments, car payments and mortgages. I mean, he was literally bursting a blood vessel. You know what? I'm just going to let you see a little bit. It is a bit naughty. But I just think it's important because you know what? So many people are kind of, they're so um, upset, really upset. So I'm not going to show you all of it because it can be a bit overkill. I'm going to show you a bit. But like I said, profanities. But I just want you to get his drift. Yeah. Right, the very simple thing. No one takes me 
me off having to tell the government what to do because they have their heads and their asses. Now, follow me. There's something that's been bothering me, so I'm just going to say it now. Dear government, we understand that the virus is not your fault. It happened. It is what it is. I'm not going to get into that idea that maybe you could have acted sooner. We can deal with that when this is all over. But here's the deal. We need a real fucking plan. It was the right move to make everyone stay home because that's the only way to deal with a virus like this. But here's where I have a problem. So, you told us to shut down non-essential businesses. You told us to go home and quarantine. You told us we have to keep social distance and stay inside. But you told us you would help. So where is the fucking help? These checks are what they are. I mean, let's be serious. I'm not going to turn away 1200 bucks because, number one, if you're going to give it to me, I'm taking it. And number two, it's our fucking money, not yours. It's ours. We pay that in taxes for everything we do every fucking day. So, okay, look at the typical family. Mortgage payment, health care payment, car payments, electric, water, garbage, phone, blah, 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 blah. So maybe, maybe the 1200 covers the mortgage. But what about all the other costs that we have each month? This $1,200 thing isn't doing shit for a normal working family. You want to help? Here's one idea. Tell the fucking banks and mortgage companies to stop all mortgage payments at this time. Just stop them. And don't give me that three-month furlough bullshit. How does that even make sense? So someone who lost their job because you said to stay at home doesn't pay mortgage for three months, but in the fourth month they had to not only pay that month that's due, but also the three months they owed in full because it was furloughed. How the fuck does that help, you greedy cocksuckers? Someone was just unemployed and not earning money for three months. They weren't earning money. Hello? Now they just start back to work and all that money magically appears so they can pay the three months in a lump sum. How are they fucking paying that? Are you fucking idiots? Look, it almost makes sense that they can start paying the current mortgage due for the month when they go back to work. But they can't pay the prior three months. They had no income. So here's the idea. Just add the three fucking months of furlough to the back end of the loan. So if they have, let's say, 19 years and six months left in their mortgage, just add the three months. So now they have 19 years and nine months. How fucking hard is that? You get your money. But you see what I mean? I mean, that would make sense. Wouldn't it? That, that's too easy. But he is fuming. Absolutely fuming. And you can imagine how other people are feeling the same, exactly the same way. They're not asking for any favours. All they're asking for is, I mean, you're dealing with people who've got money. These are the businesses. They make profits. So what's three months to them? They're getting it back. But I had to share that with you. I just thought it was such a, um, it was such a, it's kind of a shame, really, because that is what people are going through. They're in turmoil. OK, the second thing now. Let's see if we can brighten it up. Well, not really brighten it up, but this is Trump. He says he'll sign an order to temporarily suspend immigration. Now, tell me the truth. Who wants to be immigrating now? At least. At least to bloody America or even the UK. Who wants to go there with all this? You know, you've got nearly the second highest rate in the coronavirus and you're talking about you're signing off stuff to suspend immigration. I mean, sometimes I think people live in la-la land. Why the hell do you think people are going to be piling up to go to America when it's in such a state of affair that you... So there's such a degree that you need to sign a suspension. I'll tell you something. If I was, if I, there is no way if I wasn't born in this UK, if I wasn't born in the UK, I'd be ch chipping it and going back. I really, really would. But I'm born here, so I stay here. And I'm only saying that because people who have any sense will stay put. Because of the first, um, the first world countries, they do not like immigrants. They never did. They never will. They only like them as long as they can use them for something. And it's usually hard labor or hard work or the equivalent or the relative to how other people work. That's the only reason. So I don't know why. 
immigrants now that they know. It's different before maybe a couple of years ago when we had a different president and we had, you know, we had a different prime minister and way, way back. It wasn't so obvious, the enmity and the hostility towards immigrants. But now it's obvious. So I don't know where immigrants would be going now to try and, you know, rustle up and try to get in a place like America or the UK. When it's clearly in the news that it's not favourable, it's not in favour of immigrants. So now Trump is saying he's going to sign this order to temporarily suspend immigrations. I don't even think it's necessary. Ah, oh dear. I guess if people have family there and and they don't believe... You know, some people, they don't even... What's the news? They don't even know how bad it is. And they always think it's going to be different for them. I can understand if people have got family over there or they've got a business appointment, then that's different. But just to go there, just for the hell of it, to think, oh, yeah, this is a better opportunity for me. No, it's not a better opportunity for you. You have a much better opportunity in the country where you are, where you're not a minority. It's not fun being a minority, regardless of what that minority is. Minority doesn't always mean race. It can mean gender. It can mean religion. It can mean a host of things. It can mean disability. It can mean a host of things. But whatever minority you are, it's not fun, especially when people do not like minorities or they have something against them. So, who are the great American citizens that um, Donald Trump is trying to protect these immigrants from violating? It can't be all American citizens because he's trying to unnaturalize citizens. He's trying to derobe citizens. So it's not all citizens. The American citizen that he's referring to is a particular type of an American citizen. So... I would like to think that if the ban relates to COVID-19, any non-citizen would be barred from entering the US anyway, whether they're traveling for the purposes of business or visiting a family. And they need to thank their lucky stars that they're barred. I mean, sometimes when you're barred, it's God's way of telling you, don't go there. When you're prevented from doing a lot of stuff, you should never look at it as, oh, this is, you know, why does it happen to me? Or looking at it as something bad. Sometimes you've been given a break. So when something doesn't go well for you, sometimes you have to thank your lucky stars. These people have been barred if they are attempting to go into the US. They should let that their lucky stars. Go back and sit where you are. Be happy with your sunshine and whatever it is you have. Be content with what you have. Too many people are not content. They always think the grass is green on the other side. They always think that what another country has to offer is better than what they have to offer. Their country has to offer. And yet what you lose on the roundabout, you gain on the swing. So, okay. You might be able to make more dollars in America. But what is the price for that? Personally, I'd, I'd prefer to have less money and have the sun and have the contentment and the peace of being in an area where I don't have to feel as though I'm not wanted or I'm not liked. Fortunately, I live in an area where I get on very well with my neighbours. I work in a place where I get on very well with my work colleagues. But not everyone is that fortunate. And when you're thinking about reality, when you're, these are people that know me, but in this big, bad world, 
there's a lot of people out there who doesn't don't know me from Adam. As far as I'm, they're concerned, I'm just another nigger on the block. They don't care about me. So I never thank my lucky stars in that respect. I'm grateful for how I live and where I live and that I've got non-contentious non -contentious, non neighbours. Because some places you live, I don't know if you've seen um, that, that, those programmes, um, Nightmare Neighbours and Tenants. Good God! I wouldn't like to be in that situation. So I'm very, very fortunate. I have really nice neighbours and I have nice colleagues. But that's not the same for everyone. So, um, what else did I want to... Because I, sometimes I digress, don't I? Sorry about that. So what the last thing I'm going to talk about? I'm going to talk about what happens at the end of the furlough period. Now, we know that um, the government has said that they are providing 80% of individual salary for three months. Um, some employers, if they can afford it, they're going to top it up to 100%. But I'm not quite sure how many employers can do that. The problem is, is that at the end of the three months, supposing the government withdraws subsidies. Personally, well, this is just me because, you know, I'm always kind of a bit wary about anything that's being given for nothing. I would prefer to go to work and say to my employer, look, I don't want to be furloughed. I prefer to stay employed. Because technically, when you're furloughed, you're not employed. You're being subsidised by the government. And when at the end of those three months, they say to your, your, your employer, OK, we've done the three months, we can't afford to give any more. And your employer is not in a position to set up his business to a standard where he can keep you. What do you think is going to happen to you? You're going to join the two million unemployed. That's what's going to happen. So when people say um, to me, oh, you know, I'm taking the 80%, I always say to them, you'd be better off asking if there's any work you can do, anything that they you can help them with. So you're sitting at home comfortable getting 80% of your salary for doing nothing. That happens in the end, if I've said all of that, people will be laid off and first casualties will be furloughed staff. The right, okay. Oh, well, that's that bit. I mean, I think it's pretty clear what could happen. We hope it won't happen. We're hoping that the country gets back on its feet quick enough to, you know, offset the damage and recoup and get back to normal. That's what we're hoping. Yes, there's going to be a lot of struggles. A lot of businesses are going to find it hard to get back on their feet and they're going to start off in debt and they'll probably feel discouraged and all those kind of things. But at this stage, if it doesn't go more than three months, there is a possibility that we can get back on our feet. If it goes over the three months, I don't think we stand a chance in hell. So and then we've got the right to rent rule. I don't know if, how many of you knew, know about the right to rent rule. Um, apparently, the the crown, the High Court, deemed it to be discriminatory because what was happening is, is that landlords had a right who they could rent their properties to, and priority would go to British citizens, and then anybody who wasn't a British citizen, their immigration would have to be checked. The landlord would have to tell the Home Office. Um, run their name and their address and their date of birth and everything through the Home Office records and then the Home Office would come back and say okay that person's legal you can take them on or you can't take them on. If a landlord took on a person who they didn't check out or who didn't check out you know because they were illegal the landlord could get fined five years could be done for five years in prison. So it doesn't make it an attractive proposition for landlords. I mean, personally, if I if I had somebody um, coming to my um, door and they're saying, oh, they're, they've got um, 
their passport is running out in a month or something. You know, I'd be very sceptical about, well, I just wouldn't take, I just wouldn't take them because I don't know whether their passport is going to be renewed. I don't want to do five years in prison. So it makes it very, very difficult for landlords to take on people who are not, who are here on a, on a limited leave to remain because they do not want to be um, carted off in a police car. And so it was deemed at one point discriminatory, but it's been overruled. Landlords um, must still, they were trying to say that they shouldn't do that, but now landlords must report any non-British citizen to the Home Office and have them checked out before they can allow them to rent their properties. I think most landlords will see somebody who's black or Asian or anybody who's got an accent and just say, you know what, I can't deal with the hassle. I've got to be there taking passports and I've got to be um, sending off to the home office. I've got to wait for them to come back. I mean, they've made it deliberately difficult because can you imagine you just want somebody to rent a room in your home or you want to rent your house or you want to want to rent out your flat or your masonette, and you can't just rent it. Instead, you've got to take somebody's passport. You've got to get that sent off to the Home Office. You've got to wait till you hear back from them. By that, you've, by that time, you've lost about three weeks' rent. Why would anybody want to do that? So it is difficult. So private landlords are therefore permitted to continue to check the immigration status of tenants and prospective tenants and landlords who do not follow the rules can face up to five years in prison. The rate of the economy is going, anyway, this is what I was saying, the rate the economy is going, no one will be renting anyway. People will be homeless. Landlords won't be able to rent out, rent out their homes. They'll be lumbered with properties that they can't rent but have to pay mortgage, pay mortgage for. But landlords will discriminate for an easier life. But it's not a pretty picture for anybody at the moment. Because if you've got two million unemployed, you've got two million that probably are not, well, they might be trying to continue to pay their rent. But there'll be a lot of landlords on tender hooks over the next few months if things don't settle down. So let's hope that things get back on an even keel. Let's keep positive. You know what they say, a positive vision means a positive outlook. We create our own realities and all that kind of stuff. And that's all I've got to say for now. Have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.